On today's video, I'm gonna talk about my thoughts on Nyla bones and other dog chews. And so jumping into my first question, which is from Bexy Boo, um, who writes that she was wondering um, what my thoughts on Nyla bones and similar dog chews were. So her lab likes to gnaw on them every so often, and also on other things like antlers, um, yak milk bars, and other things like that. Um, she'd love to hear my views on that. So um, this question was triggered by my discussion of the risks of bones in my raw diet review, um, and that those risks really are that they can cause fractured teeth, which are a source of pain um, and a root for uh, and a reason for to tooth root abscesses from developing. So that's a bit of a mouthful. Um, they also bones also have a risk of um, causing obstruction, a potential obstruction, and also perforation of the intestines, resulting in septic peritonitis, um, which has a 50% mortality rate. So 50% of dogs that develop septic peritonitis are likely to die. Um, so, you know, there are some significant risks with bones. Now, antlers actually cause a similar problem, and they cause all those similar problems because they're also very, very hard. Um, so they can break teeth, and if a, a small enough chunk is swallowed, then that can cause similar obstruction problems. Now, Nyla bones, that's obviously a synthetic, a synthetic product. Um, they are also incredibly hard and could cause fractures in teeth. Now, they're unlikely to get kind of shattered and splintered and so swallowed, but tooth fractures, like I say, they are painful. We definitely shouldn't ignore them. So unfortunately, all too often, when a dog has a fractured teeth, they're still going to be eating. They're still going to appear like they're they're absolutely fine. They just don't let on that they are in pain. And if you've ever had any kind of dental problem, you'll know how painful they can be. But I always say that um, a dog or a cat, they don't know that if they stop eating, they're going to be taken to the vet and have their teeth fixed. They simply know that if they stop eating, they're going to die. So just imagine how painful uh, it needs to be for them to stop eating. So we don't want them to use that as the end point. So really, any fracture your teeth really need to be removed or addressed certainly we can do kind of crowns and things like that if advanced kind of dental care is something that you're interested in but you know that aside really from a dental chew point of view a kind of a rule of thumb that we suggest is that if it would hurt to be hit on the knee with something then really it shouldn't be used as a chew toy for dogs so what are my preferences then? Well, I prefer kind of the strong rubber chew toys um, like the ubiquitous Kong, so I think they're fantastic. Um, you know, they need to be an appropriate size and they need to be an appropriate hardness for, for your dog. So, um, you know, there's no point giving a really small breed dog Kong to a big, large Labrador because they potentially are gonna swallow it or it's gonna get stuck and they're going to choke. Um, also, if you've got a power chewer, then you want to use one of the harder, tougher black versions rather than the kind of the classic red version version which are a little bit softer. You're also going to need to discard them when they're getting worn although generally they will last an incredibly long time and you can also fill them with something tasty to encourage that um, chewing to encourage them to um, kind of get uh, absorbed in trying to get that that tasty treat from the middle you know so they're a great source of mental engagement uh, and you know can help to a certain degree with um, dental hygiene as well um, but yeah, there are other food puzzles that we can use if we're talking about kind of mental engagement and trying to kind of make our pets' lives more interesting. And that includes um, kind of food puzzles, licky mats, um, snuffle pads, um, and various other things. And I'll leave some links to those in the show notes. So if you're interested in yeah getting your dog something like that, then yeah, check out the show notes. You always want to use kind of these particular toys under supervision. Uh, you don't want them kind of chewing bits off. Certainly the, the snuffle mats are, are kind of fabric strips that you hide food in and you don't want, the last thing you want is your dog to be chewing, um, chewing strips and swallowing those because they can cause problems as well. Now, if we're then moving on to kind of dental specific chews, while there are various options, uh, what you really want to be doing is choosing one that has got a VOHC or a Veterinary Oral Health Council seal of approval because that means that there is some evidence that they do reduce um, or prevent tartar buildup. Now, they're not the be all and end all. They're not going to completely eliminate um, any tartar. They're not going to completely eliminate the need for doing other dental healthcare procedures. So that could be toothbrushing, and I'll move on to that in, an, in another question. Um, or um, dental diets and also kind of intermittent health um, kind of cleaning, um, kind of hygiene cleaning with a scaler and polishing uh, just to try and keep things nice and clean. Um, you know, oral health is really important for, for general body health. So it's definitely something to think about. Um, yeah, so like I say, there are a number of other things we should do, but if we're looking at dental specific chews, you want to be looking for that VOHC seal of approval. And that can also go with um, other 
oral hair, oral care products, toothpaste, and that kind of thing. So really, those are my thoughts. We want to avoid the really hard chew, so nyla bones, antlers, and that kind of thing, as well as bones, and consider some of these other options instead. You've been watching the Dr. Alex Answers video podcast. Remember to subscribe and head over to DrAlexAnswers.com for any links, downloads, and get your question answered.